So um, I only had a few days to prepare for this and then COVID hit us really, really hard this week. So I don't have any anything to share. Um, Dr. Sean, I'm sorry that I didn't respond to your offer to show some of your videos either or some of your bumpers. So anyway, uh, I do have what we've done other years. So here is a bumper with the Velcro along the top. And so I can bring it a little bit closer. It's standard uh, bumper back, but uh, the flap just goes up and down and that makes it really easy for, for changing. But to make this, a little bit of trial and error was involved and you would need a sewing machine, but the sewing is not difficult. Uh, you just need um, a lot of, of uh, problem solving and geometry. Really, that's, that's all it is. So um, there's a normal bumper cover and then the flap goes back and forth. Put the soft Velcro on the part that should be moving back and forth. And you'll be using a sewing machine for that part. And then you can just staple on the, um, the loop part up here. So I do have patterns. Oh, this one is the kind of bumper that is just like normal um, 45 degree corners at the edge. But I also have patterns for making um, an intake bumper. So here, this part is the, the mitered corner and this part is the flat part. So you'd have an intake right here. And then I also have a pattern, but not an example of how to make a C corner uh, on the bumper. So it, it isn't actually, so the, the bumper, two bumper pieces are together. So to do this, um, you would take your bumper fabric and you would have the red side and the blue side and you put the outsides out. And then this is, you would start with the sewing machine. So you would take a, just measure off five inches here. So the, the flat part is five inches long and just sew straight down here. And I always just draw a line with the pencil. So you don't have to be able to sew straight on a sewing machine. You can follow, follow that pencil line down there and sew it together. Now, if you want it to look really nice, you can use red thread on one side and blue thread on the other, and then it doesn't show so much. But after you sew five inches away from the edge, and this is the flat part, then go ahead and sew right here to keep them nice and flat together. And this is the flap. And you can open it up. And here's the part that goes around the wood and the, and the pool noodles. And the flappy part is still holding off here. So it looks like that. And then you would uh, measure your board. And so here is the corner and how it, how it would look. Can you see any of the writing on the pattern? Aha, uh -huh. no, not going to work. I can see a little. Okay, well, on the pattern um, here, it's marked that this is where the end of the board would be. So whatever your measurement for the length of the bumper is, this is where the end of the board goes. And you would cut this out like this. And then remember that this is the part that is sewn together. This is gonna be the flap and the Velcro goes here. This is the part that opens. And this is still sewed together here. So even though it's been cut here, it's still sewed together down that middle center line. And so when you, uh, on the back side, there are marks where you would put this dot and this dot together and sew them and it gives you a corner. And over here, this is the same thing on the blue side. And so you will get a corner that fits down over the board. And that's really all it is. So one long seam down here and make sure that it goes all the way up to here as well. And then you cut this out, cut this out and open it up. 
match the dots and sew it right here. So straight lines, match these dots and sew them right there. And if I had enough fingers, I would flip it and you would have a corner bumper and this flaps is left loose to flap back and forth. So um, this is for the standard 45 degree end of bumper like this one. So um, that's probably pretty difficult to follow. Um, any questions so far on, on that? The long flap here that goes around the end, it wraps around the end. That is what this part is. So it's going to wrap around the end like this. Front side, this is where the flap lift um, begins. And then it wraps around here and just staple it down. Okay, did that, was that okay? Any comments, questions? Okay, let's look at the intake bumper. And here, um, this is a really short piece of bumper. The one corner is the 45 degree mitered corner and it goes up and down and it's, this one was uh, an older one and mistakes were made. So this goes up and down and you have to kind of fold it there. But the mistakes that were made were here, this part was not covered. And so if it was a blue bumper, then you would have that little bit of red showing. And uh, so that's, that's not acceptable. And when you have the red bumper, you have a little bit of blue showing. And so we, um, when we were at the tournament, we would just use red and blue tape to cover that for each match. But uh, the pattern has been modified so that And this is not going to be very visible either. So I don't have a red and blue pattern. All I have is brown paper on this one. But um, this this is the five inch long um, flap part. The Velcro goes right there. This little flap right here, this square, is what folds in to cover that uh, part of the of the center of the intake and this part um, would be a dart down here so if you have somebody who knows how to sew then they'll know what a dart is um, but this one center line of the bumper right here this is where you would stitch down the middle here is the flap this is extra paper I should cut that off but here's the sewing uh, center line Velcro along the top of the flap. This is uh, for the intake side. This is the little flappy that covers the extra square on the inside. And then this will be folded up down here. And this is where you make get the corner that folds around there. Okay, for the C bumpers, or the, the corner where, the, where you don't want them to be separated. So this is a pattern for that. Here is a mark for the end of the board right there. And um, Velcro goes along here. This is the flap part. And here's the part that opens to wrap around the bumper. And when you're ready to, you, you cut one of these for one bumper and then another for the other goes the other direction. And then you'll open them up and sew them together. So you'd sew right along here to join them together. And then you'd have the flaps. These are left free to go up and down, but you'd sew one, uh, sew them together right along here. Okay, so this is uh, not a very good description. And if I had uh, paper patterns, uh, I, that would be a whole lot better. 
I've been thinking about how we could uh, distribute paper patterns and they're too big to print on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So um, they do fit nicely onto a, um, just a brown paper or grocery bag. Um, and I am willing to share these with anybody if they want them, but I'd have to figure out a way to, to copy them and send them out. So I don't have anything else to say. Are there questions? You make it seem so simple. Now, if you're a skilled, say, seamstress at this, how long would it take someone with average abilities, say, to whip this up? Okay, so I can sew pretty well, but the only sewing that you need to do here is a straight line, and, and that is not a difficult thing. But it still takes me hours and hours to make these bumpers, mm -hmm. partly because I always want them to look perfect, but also because it is problem solving. And so the sewing part is not the hard part. It's the problem solving for making sure that it's, it's gonna fit. You know, I measure them at least like 10 times before I ever do any cutting. And um, so it's the problem solving. Yeah. And you were probably not content with the, uh, the, the tape as a uh, fix all. <laughs> You wanted to fix it. No, definitely was not. But you know, the sewing is you would need a sewing machine that has a really strong needle to it and can right. sew through. The most <clears throat> you would be sewing through at one time is two thicknesses of bumper fabric and then two um, soft Velcro sides because on the flap <clears throat> you need to have Velcro on each side, and so it takes. Uh, it takes a lot of time. You, you would sew, sew this together without Velcro, then put one piece of Velcro down, do a, do a line, and then put the other piece of Velcro down and do a line, and then do the last line to put them all together. So sewing this length right here, probably four times before I'm finished with even this part. But again, it's all straight lines. And then... Um, on these edges, on this flap right here, um, it's the raw edge of the fabric and it could unravel if you're not, um, if you don't have a zigzag machine. So I have a zigzag machine and I just zigzag stitch over this and it's not going to unravel. If you don't have zigzag machine, you could do some kind of like tacky fabric glue so that it doesn't unravel. And so, you know, stitching this part maybe four times, then you do the one stitch down the center here, that's where you start, the one big one down the middle. Mm -hmm. At that point, you need to iron on the, the numbers. Or actually, after you cut the lengths and get the lengths cut, then you center and iron on the numbers. And then cut out, you know, make all the cuts on the ends. And then the sewing part on the ends is really not difficult. I also, because I want them to look nice, then I always, when I wrap this around and you've got just the pool noodles in there, um, after I get them in there, I stuff them a little bit um, tighter with just plain foam like this, just little soft layers of foam and stuff it down in there to make the, the um, corners nice and tight. And um, then I always, try, at least I always hope to try, to let the kids, um, you know, staple it onto the, the bumper boards. And they usually do that. And then they will staple on the, the loop Velcro. And does that have to be positioned in such a way that, you know, you know, another robot can't catch on anything? pulling it down that would create a problem or is that Velcro? It looks like it's super strong Velcro and- It's yeah. regular normal Velcro that you would buy at a fabric store or that you buy on um, at Amazon, but it's, um, it's one inch wide hmm. uh, or maybe it's, yeah, it's one inch wide and it's sewn very securely to the flat part. So that's not gonna come off. Okay. And then when you, after you get this all on and mounted correctly to, and stapled down, then you would have the 
um, the loop part of the Velcro is stapled down very carefully all the way along here to the wood. And so that does occasionally pull off, but then you just put, you know, get another staple gun and attach it back. Okay. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't seem to pull off. And it's on the robot, it's going to be either underneath where uh, it's going to be touching or it's going to be, you know, facing the field itself, or it's going to be on the top where a robot would normally not catch it. Right. And the corners are usually tight enough that they're not going to be caught either. So there's not much here to catch. It's only this mark that much that is loose. And this part is just wrapped around fabric. There's nothing to catch there. This so part clean. could be caught, but yeah. that would be unusual. Right. Such clean lines there. That's beautiful. Again, it takes me hours to do this. So maybe three evenings, three evenings at least to put it together. And that would be, I go off in a separate room where the, uh, from where the team is working and I um, work on these. It helps to have really big tables work, so you can lay it all out the whole, the whole length of the bumper fabric so that you don't have to, um, and you can measure it all at once. Do you ever have students who take an interest in this process and, and uh, sit with you and watch you? Or It's such a great skill. Every, I think everybody needs to yeah, at least but, have a um, little bit of a... We're a fairly small team. At least we have been a fairly small team. And so in the past, we didn't have enough people to do anything and everything anyway. So right, right. they would all be building robot and I would do, be doing bumpers. Right, but I've right. retired. And so they all know that at any, any point, I'm just going to you know go away somewhere. <laughs> and they need to have somebody who learns. And so, yes, this year we are trying to find somebody to sit and learn how to do this. And pass the torch. Yeah. So it might be another mom, but I don't know. We need a kid to do right. this. Right. Wonderful. But the C bumpers um, were a little bit harder to do, but they, they ended up being okay, too. And I know I know already know I'll be doing intake buffers this year. Mm -hmm. Any questions from anyone? <clears throat> if I were, were to figure out a way to share these patterns, is there anyone who's interested? <laughs> Lisa, yeah. Okay. Wonderful, and I know this is being recorded, uh, so we'll we'll share this with the broader community as well. Okay. A lot of times, people aren't able to watch it, you know, live and in person, but uh, they will take advantage of the recording. So, okay, well, here is the team to get in contact with if you want to find me. So, wonderful. I can share the patterns. Thank you so much. This was wonderful, Dick Sean. Do you have anything to add? Nope. Um, is it good if I go ahead and stop recording? Is it fine? All right. I think so.